Excellent. Hello and welcome to another TAC Live session here from ThinkTAC, uh, Facebook Live, uh, hopefully broadcasting to the whole world. But we hope that a lot of you are around, uh, you know, to, uh, send the message to your friends to get on to others who may be interested in seeing a bunch of interesting experiments today done with an activity. Uh, this is, I think, our eighth session and for the first time we are outdoors. We're doing a TAC Live Sunday for the second or third time and this time we've come outdoors in the beautiful morning hours here in Bangalore at uh, C.V. Raman's home uh, in a very old uh, neighborhood in Bangalore. It's a two-acre property in the middle of the city. Uh, pretty, you'll see the house later on uh, when we do some nice uh, launching from there. Uh, but these are the beautiful gardens and the trees that you can see here. And today Ali is going to be leading the effort in showing us the activity that we are going to make. As you've seen, we've done several activities in physics, chemistry and biology over the last several uh, weeks. And we've been uh, uh, doing lots of TAC lab sessions for kids here. We have been doing online programs called ONTAC. You can go to our ONTAC site and sign up from anywhere in this country to do a bunch of experiments in a particular theme. We have six or seven themes available in physics, chem and bio for you to sign up on. So we hope that you'll do that. Please, uh, please go to our website, you know, check out our Facebook page, email us, any queries, you can do that. What's also coming up this week is the um, deadline for the preliminary one stage of the RYSI, the Raman Young Science Innovator Award, the preliminary stage uh, one. Uh, the deadline is 31st May, so we hope you'll make submissions till then. Uh, you're allowed to make up to two submissions in each preliminary. There'll be three preliminaries over the course of the next five months. Uh, if you miss this preliminary, you can always apply in the next, but you lose two chances in the sense that for each preliminary, you're allowed to submit two entries. Uh, there's automatic entries to the finals for the best ones uh, from this preliminary to the semi-finals. And uh, you can do that again in preliminary two and preliminary three two submissions for each so you get a total of six chances to try and get an entry into the RYSI semi-finals and finals. However if you miss this preliminary you'll get only four chances so we'd encourage you to submit your hands-on science innovation uh, on ramanaward.org r-a-m-a-n-a-w-a-r-d dot o-r-g is the website uh, all the details are there for that uh, very very wonderful contest uh, which is supported by the Raman Research Institute Trust uh, as well as Innovation and Science Promotion Foundation and the finals are conducted right here on these grounds at Raman's house. This year they will be in November. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so we have lots of very exciting programs. Today we are going to make a very interesting thing. Uh, Ali will help us uh, make that. So I think it is a parachute yes. that we are making today. Yes, Koshika, we will be making parachute today. Great. So, uh, using very simple materials, I think most of you have already got the list of what is to be used. It's a simple uh, waste paper bag, a trash bag. You can use any kind of plastic. You can use, try different materials as well. You can try cloth. And there's of course scissors, tape and all those tools. There's some strings and there's some tape. And there's some, we are using magnets as weights. We'll tell you why later. But you can use any weights. They can be nuts, they can be bolts, they can be nails, they can be stones in the garden, but we are using magnets uh, to make certain things a bit simpler. So Ali will start uh, with telling us, uh, with showing us how to uh, start making the parachute once you have a trash bag. So I think one just opens it out. Of course the trash bag has a seam at one end, so we get rid of that seam. Uh, that will reveal to us a very nice kind of uh, double lead plastic bag so he's removed the seal and then there's some bits at the end like this piece of string that came off that holds the plastic cover together and then you see you get a very nice uh, uh, nice plastic bag like this but it's open at both ends right because you've cut the seal so so it's a double lead kind of plastic bag which you can just slice off with a scissor uh, and uh, go right through the edge with the scissor till you arrive at this following piece of uh, plastic which is pretty much just a square, a beautiful square sheet of 
uh, plastic. Now, of course, one shouldn't be using uh, too much of plastic these days. Uh, we try to minimize the use of it. So that's why I'm saying you, you should use things that are uh, already been thrown away, like a waste plastic bag, or you can use cloth, or you can use, uh, you know, any kind of uh, any kind of material that's thin, and that you can cut to some sort of size like this. So this is around 40 or 45 centimeters yeah. one edge. Uh, it's 40 by 40 uh, centimeters. Yeah, so 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters is the size of that square. So beautiful 1600 square centimeter piece of plastic. Now, Ali will start. So we have to make it a, a canopy and most parachute canopies, uh, for example, hot air balloons and so on, uh, look kind of uh, circular in shape. Of course, you have the very nice paragliding ones that are rectangular. We won't make one of those. We make a typical jellyfish circular type of uh, parachute uh, canopy. So how does one make a square into a para, into a circle by making eventually just one cut is what we are going to make. Yes. Uh, so, so we'll start with some folding. Uh, Ali will fold that in half. You can fold either uh, edge in half obviously because it's a square but now the folding becomes more and more important. Uh, we'll move this sheet out and uh, uh, we'll fold it in half again and as you notice there is one apex which is uh, completely closed and there are two there's one apex that's completely open with four sheets there and there are two apexes that are have yes. the double sheet here so there's two options of folding this into a triangle one is along this edge the totally close to the totally open edge or the two edged uh, ones that are half open yeah so it's very important that one folds continues to fold with this as the apex, as the vertex of the entire folding system. So we'll always use this as the apex where the whole system has been double closed. So it'll be folded this way into a triangle. And then again along that apex, it is folded again into a another, into another triangle which will Yeah, so we've made four folds in all, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so we have another triangle with a bit of this old triangle jutting out. And we have another very nice right angle triangle here. And then Ali will play a small trick with us with a scissor. And we can see what happens. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, the, uh, most of the people end up uh, Instead of making a circle, they end up with making flower kind of shapes. So to, uh, today we'll try to get that shape in a perfect circle instead of making flowers and rectangular or polygons. So technically if you cut this straight, you should get a nice uh, 16 sided uh, polygon, which is what Ali is first doing. So if you open this now, it will be a polygon. But then he'll, I think, will you make a small curve on that like this uh, to get yes. a circle? Very yeah. slight curve. Not even, you know, just a kind of, and then just bend it slightly as you reach this edge. Yeah, not much. Yeah, yeah, just not even that much. That'll give you that flower, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so we'd make a slight, in fact, you can barely see that it's a curve. And hopefully, when you open this, we will hopefully get as close to a circular rim wow. as possible. There is some bit of uh, you can see where the cuts have been made and there is a little bit of that flowery shape but that's not bad for a first attempt at making a nice circle. Now as you can see we've made folds on the parachute so we have several lines. You can think of this as a compass like a north, south, east, west and you know northeast, northwest and so on and we have these beautifully already cut pieces of string. Each one about 40-45 centimeters long, so a foot and a half if you want to use the old imperial scale of units, or 45 centimeters. And what we are going to do is tape them at eight evenly spaced uh, points along the rim of the parachute. So those are the eight lines that you can see pretty clearly here. And you can think of them as the cardinal directions and the in-between directions. Uh, so Ali is going to use already some small pre-cut pieces of uh, insulation tape nice yellow tape and uh, and um, stick them onto the parachute 
So we hope you are enjoying doing this. Uh, there's a bunch of you, I'm sure, who are logged on. Uh, we have our TAC Lab partners from across the country who should be broadcasting to their children uh, in their groups. Uh, we have uh, lots of interest from schools. Once they open, they're going to start broadcasting these TAC Lives live as well to classrooms and so on. And uh, we hope you're messaging out. There's also, I think, the free giveaway that is continuing. So if you tag us, share the screen on your feed, and take a screenshot and send it to us, then you will be eligible to receive a free tactivity giveaway from us. So we call these tactile activities tactivities. Uh, so at ThinkTac, we try and promote using of our hands as well as our brains. So that's why ThinkTac, and we hope you're enjoying uh, making this uh, wonderfully simple activity. Uh, please send us your questions. Uh, uh, you know, we would like like to know from you why you think a parachute does fly or does glide or behaves differently from something else. Uh, we'll talk about that as well later, but we'd like to know from you too what you think about how a parachute does glide or fly and how is it different from, say, a bird flying or an aeroplane flying. Okay? So uh, you can think about, you know, the type of materials we use, you know, what we are doing, why is it, uh, why is it, we, why, is it, uh, why are we doing something that we are uh, uh, to make this parachute? Are there anything, any parameters that are particularly important for making a parachute? Why are they as, as they are? And uh, as you can see, the eight strings have almost been tied up. It's very nice, equally spaced, equal length strings. The beautiful small pieces of tape. You'll notice the tapes have been put slightly inside the rim of the parachute so that you, know, you don't have sticky bits sticking out of the rim which will uh, cause issues later as you will see and so we have eight very nice strings that have been tied up here so this is our lovely uh, parachute uh, canopy uh, these threads that we've used I think are called what are they called control, control links, links. Yes. Control, these links. Are called control links yeah so I guess one could control the flight <laughs> of a parachute by exactly. tagging on them pulling them and so on as you've seen when people use them uh, but here there won't be we won't be controlling it much right because we will we'll actually be launching these parachutes with some weights so you make sure that all the eight strings come together you have your inverted jellyfish and now your proper jellyfish and uh, the eight strings are beautifully in one length and we tie them together with a simple knot uh, at that point yeah? so it's a uh, very neat kind of knot you could, uh, you know, try launching a parachute uh, like this as well without, uh, without uh, anything else. But the thing is, that the string is quite light. It's quite windy and breezy outside. When people take parachutes up, uh, they of course don't want to be drifted by the wind too much. And we are not going to send any people up, but we will have a payload. In this case, we are just using a ring magnet as the weight. Yes. So we are just tying one of them uh, to the bottom of the parachute so that is the payload and you can already see one of the reasons why we use a ring magnet it has a very nice hole in there so it's easy to kind of tie a string but there are many other things with a hole right like a, like a nut or beads so you can use those too uh, this one has a significant weight like a nut so you can use uh, so you can use these very uh, helpful ring magnets so Ali has tied one on and you can already see that it's uh, uh, beautifully you know dancing in air but slightly drifting away and we don't know if we can launch it very high so what we are going to do is add a couple of more no. magnets yeah so we we'll make it what three magnets is what yes, we're trying three magnets. three magnets and now you know we don't have to tie these because they're magnets they just stick on the existing one and uh, it's very easy to add weights and the great thing is that they're all identical so we can say this is three times the weight of what was uh, there with one magnet so uh, Ali is going to set up, I think, uh, yes. a bit of the launching of this. Yeah, so this is also kind of important, how you hold the, the parachute before it can be deployed. So you, on the apex you hold it, you kind of make sure that the edges are, uh, are, uh, are straight and not crumpled up too much. You fold it once and then you start folding it over. Uh, also you have to do the alternate fold so that uh, it does uh, does deploy when you actually try and throw it up and then he ties the string around not ties it but just kind of wraps the string around that piece of plastic and uh, 
again as you can see it's kind of alternate uh, on the thing so that we are not uh, so that it does unwind when you throw it up it's put like a weight inside the plastic and then I think uh, we'll have to move a little bit back so the camera can focus continue to focus on Ali while he uh, tries and launches this in the grounds of Panchavati which is the name of this property beautiful absolutely gorgeous uh, three magnets it went up maybe about I don't know about 15 uh, four or five meters around 15 feet and uh, maybe we'll do another launch for you to see that beautiful uh, beautiful effect we hope that you're also making yours uh, you're going outdoors you can see you need some outdoor space to do this uh, which is why we are not recording from indoors today it's also very beautiful uh, here on these grounds I think to see that so you've already seen two lovely launches using uh, three magnets. So what we can do now is double the weight of the magnets. So we'll use uh, six magnets instead of three. So that's just attaching, you know, three more onto the, uh, onto the same payload. And we can do that too. You can use this. Take one off and put these two. Yeah. So now we have six magnets and Ali will do uh, pretty much the same thing so you can quickly do the folding uh, as we concentrate on the very nice uh, uh, six magnet payload that's there at the bottom uh, you can do various experiments with this you can calculate the amount of time for example or the height that the uh, that the first one went up to we can see how high this goes and we can compare the difference or uh, difference or not in the amount of time it takes for them to come down so this one's with double the weight and as you can see it does uh, come down a little bit faster uh, we may be able to launch it a wee bit higher uh, Ali will probably try again with the second launch of this and as you can see with the simple materials used here you can also make lots of variations one would be to change the material so you know use cloth or use one of those uh, you know synthetic uh, sheets to make the canopy that one went beautifully high drifting well and away into the wonderful trees of Panchavati where it's gotten stuck thankfully on a lower branch of a tree so we can retrieve that uh, beautiful parachute that we have just made. As you can see you can do various things, you can change the size of the canopy, you can change the shape, you can make multiple variations. We'd like you to come up with some ideas for variations and also share them with us on this feed uh, and uh, we will we will start uh, doing some experiments with some of the variations we have made. So while, uh, and to do this, we'll have to actually climb up to the roof of Panchavati. So you'll soon see Ali on top of the Panchavati building. But in the meantime, we will tell you a little bit about these uh, parachutes. As I was telling you, they can be made with different materials. So that's one of the variations. We've made them all with string and, uh, string and this kind of waste paper plastic bag. You can use cloth, you can use other kinds of string like nylon string or you know you can try with metal wire for example, see if that works or with stretched rubber band. But what we have done is we've tried different shapes uh, of parachutes, not really shapes. We've taken another parachute which is a double parachute which you'll see launch shortly to compare two parachutes, one which is our regular one which we just made and another one which is double with two canopies so we have doubled the so-called surface area. Of the of the parachute and the other one we've used longer strings we've used longer strings so we'll see if that alters the flight at all of the parachute and similarly you could change various parameters longer strings more strings less strings uh, you know different shapes uh, why, why should we use circular can it be square can it be rectangular as we've talked about in the past so there's various options you can use for uh, launching a parachute just to give you an idea of why a parachute flies what if I throw this piece of paper down like this? It kind of glides down, whereas if I crumple it up, you know, what happens? It just kind of falls down. Now, what's the difference? The weight is the same, but something else may have changed by me crumpling it up as opposed to keeping it flat out. Now, of course, if I have, say, this piece of magnet here and this piece of paper if I drop them both at the same time at what time do they reach the ground you know start thinking about that as well what are the forces acting on it and so on 
and I think we are ready with Ali on the Panchavati roof. So I'll keep talking while the camera points towards Ali. He's right there. It's about we can go a bit closer. Is that yeah. better? Yeah. Uh, tell us, uh, Manjunath can tell us about can when, we should, uh, when we should when we should stop moving. The mic here is connected to this beautiful camera, so we will try and see where the visibility is kind of nice as you can see the beautiful grounds of Panchavati and uh, Ali is here he's climbed up that gorgeous ladder that you may have just seen and he is uh, right about you know four meters above ground level uh, and releasing two at the same time I think one is a double parachute and the other is the regular one that he launched just a few minutes ago they both have the same weight so that is the same three uh, three magnet weight, and uh, uh, whenever Ali is ready, he can launch the two together. Ready? Yeah. And you can see the wind. And you can see both the parachutes approximately landing at about the same time. Uh, it may or may not happen. We will think that with changing the area of the canopy, you should get a difference uh, in the amount of time it takes. But it also depends on the wind. It depends on uh, how the shape evolved while it was uh, while it was descending. And I think Ali has another variation ready for us, which is again windows. using the same uh, using the same parachute we made Close first, windows. the same the same parameters as well as one with a longer string. So we have to see if there's any difference between the two, the longer string as well as the one with the uh, with the same length of string. So we are back focusing on Ali here. Longer string and shorter string as you can quite visibly see uh, from, the, uh, from, from the camera, it's quite uh, evident. And we'll see if that makes any difference. Almost at the same time, but the one with the shorter strings seems to have landed, you know, maybe a second after the one with the longer string. So very interesting variations. You can change the size. You can use a smaller canopy, bigger canopy, more strings, less strings, uh, different length of strings, multiple canopies. And you can see how it works, how a parachute works. Right? So, uh, so some very interesting variations that you have seen there. Uh, we can move back to perhaps the table where we have some of the materials and we can continue our conversation there. I hope all of you are enjoying. You've got to make uh, your first parachute perhaps uh, with whatever materials you have. Very simple material, right? You need just some string and you need something to kind of mount it on. In this case, we've used some waste paper bags, but you can use any material that is thin and, uh, uh, you know, not too heavy. At the same time, uh, you want it to be able to kind of spread out with the string, so the strings have some role to play. If we just throw a plastic bag from top, it may not spread out nicely like that. The weight also kind of nudges on the strings, it's pulling, it, uh, pulling them down, so they become nice and taut, and they're able to act on the canopy and make it like a nice jellyfish type of shape. Now, Ali will tell us some trivia about these wonderful parachutes. I think, uh, uh, when was it? When is it that the first parachute was uh, deployed, launched, and who was the person? Um, the first parachute was deployed in the year 1797, October 22, in France, by the own, his own inventor, Andrew. Okay. okay. And the first woman who flew through parachute was his own wife, named Jean. Okay, and this all happened pretty much on the same day, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay, that's wonderful. 1797, so we are talking 220, more than 220 years, 222 years, which is a pretty long time back. And uh, what about aviation? Because we talked about planes as well. When was the first plane flown? The first plane flew ex uh, exactly on December 17, 1903 at 10.35 a.m. Also oh, pretty close to this time. Uh, again, 116 years ago. And by I think Orville and Wilbur Orville Wright, and Wilbur, yes. uh, everyone's heard of the Wright brothers. They had some very jazzy equipment to uh, fly that plane. And uh, you might think about what's different. Maybe you can tell us, you know, put a comment, put an uh, answer in our comment feed about what is the difference between a parachute flying and a plane flying. 
so uh, you could you could think about that as well as about how birds fly birds fly using various techniques some flap their wings some keep their wings uh, you know straight and climb up so called thermals some birds like honey birds can fly backwards uh, they buzz their wings at you know 50 100 times per second so it's like you know it's almost like a that's why they're called hummingbirds because they make a nice humming sound with their wings so there's lots of techniques that insects and uh, uh, birds have used for billions of years <laughs> to actually fly so as humans we, we cannot fly and we've been trying these various methods to kind of put us in air uh, for the last couple of hundred years of course now lots of people are able to travel all over the world pretty fast using aviation and parachutes keep us safe from things like uh, falling from heights if people want to do adventure sports like uh, skydiving and so on they deploy parachutes it's apparently great fun i would like to do it at some point but it sounds pretty scary too uh, i hope some of you get to do it at some point in your uh, in your young lives um, so yeah so there's uh, multiple uses of parachutes they can be used for safety purposes when uh, you know for, for planes in distress then you can deploy parachutes you may have seen that in several movies uh, and of course for things like you can have uh, in, in space shuttles when they deploy the exit chute then it is it is hung on a parachute and you're kind of the exit pod and you've seen that uh, as well maybe in real life when uh, when they show televising of a satellite landing uh, or, uh, or even in movies like Gravity and so on. So, uh, so yeah, lots of uses of parachutes. Uh, uh, they can be used to slow down vehicles as well. So you have fast aircraft carriers that need a very, uh, you know, planes that land on aircraft carriers that need a very short distance to slow down. So they can be slowed down. Now you might wonder what it is. That a, that a parachute is doing to slow down. Maybe Ali also had some uh, nice trivia about, you know, the youngest or the oldest uh, yes. people coming down a parachute. Okay. Uh, we always remember the first guy who has uh, dropped from the parachute, but there is a guy, he, his age was 100 years. Uh, it, it will be good if you guys comment in the comment section his name. Like uh, The question is, who's the oldest person who jumped from uh, jumped from a uh, feet of 3,200 using a parachute? So he was. Uh, there's a small hint. He was from England. So please uh, com comment the answers in the comment section. Yeah. So wonderful trivia question for you there, which you can do a little bit of research and find out. On his hundredth birthday, he uh, parachuted down more than thousand meters, more than 3,000 feet, and. Uh, uh, he was alive to tell the tale. Uh, so uh, good on him. Uh, so you can do lots of things with parachute. You might wonder what it is that makes a parachute glide down like that. Uh, if we were able to create a room that had a vacuum and we wore our oxygen masks and we threw a parachute down, perhaps you would notice like, like the magnet or that crumpled piece of paper, it actually would fall at the same speed as any weight that you drop. So what Galileo told us 400 years back, just using his brains, is that if I drop even an iron ball and a feather from the same height, they'll drop to the ground at the same time. But that was ignoring the effects of what we call the atmosphere or the air. In this case, we are creating a canopy. So that creates what's called a surface area. And when that starts coming down, the air is pushing up on it. It's called resistance or air drag. You can think of it as the friction uh, effect that a fluid or a gas, which is a gas or a liquid, has on anything that's coming down. That's because the air pushes up on it, so it depends a lot on the size of that canopy. And it also depends on the total weight of the system. So if you use something too heavy, it will fall down fast. If you use it lighter, it will come down slower. If it's too light, it will drift away in the wind, so you need some payload to pull the strings. And you can keep playing around with those. We hope you've enjoyed this activity. As I said, there's multiple things you can do to stay engaged with us. Sign up or an on-tap page for one of our online programs and materials get dropped to your doorstep. You interact with our educators for 10 hours over a two-week period and make about 10 to 15 activities in a given theme. You can also uh, 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 you know, apply for the Raman Awards. It's totally free to participate in. Go to our website, ramanaward.org. In that case, to, uh, to make your submissions. We want you to make submissions like this, hands-on innovations. Think of variations, think of new ideas, and you can actually submit them 
and uh, and apply for that contest and be eligible to come here to Panchavati for the finals which will happen here at the end of November. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the show. I would like to thank uh, Ali for doing a great job in making and demonstrating and giving us some lovely questions. Any last few things to say Ali? Uh, same way, keep supporting us, like our page, like our pages on Facebook and YouTube and keep learning and keep growing. Thank you. So yeah, stay engaged uh, and enjoy uh, the rest of your Sunday. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.